what, what was it or what happened to you that made you decide that it wasn't important to take care of yourself anymore? What was it? I saw an ad for that, and <laughs> I thought, oh, why not get that? So I told my mom to order it. I don't know if he expected it, but yeah, he... I did not expect it. He was laughing at times. <laughs> I mean, the good, thing, the good thing is he got my sense of humor, so... <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, so this is my morning routine, and it's pretty simple. After I have my coffee and my collagen, I've got to get my shake ready for work, which, for me, I need to have calories, I need to have protein. A lot of controversy about the amount of protein that you can consume. I have worked out that I need about a scoop and a half, and that works really well for me. So a scoop and a half, this is dark chocolate, and this may seem weird, but I don't mind chocolate and berries. It actually tastes okay. Oh, I got a mango there. That is good. I really, from the, I mean, from the time I was a young boy, wanted to be a professional football player. And through, you know, the beginning of high school, I mean, I was, I was on track, and uh, I had gotten injured wrestling, and I injured my knee, and I was doing running to rehab my knee, and the cross country coach saw me, and he said, I, I'd love for you to come out and, and take a run with the rest of the boys, and I went out for my first seven mile run with the team, and I was a sophomore at that point, and. I thought it was the easiest thing in the world, and it felt good. It was just something different that I hadn't experienced before. And you know, through that process, I ended up losing weight, and I went to football camp that summer, and I just remember seeing the hits and how much greater that contact was gonna be as I got older, and the more I lost weight, the more difficult it was for me to make contact. Shoulders just felt it. I could feel it through my whole body. I didn't have the same drive, so I, I decided, you know, running is for me. And then all of a sudden I started to, to race and I ran my first mile ever in under five minutes. And I thought, ah, oh, this is easy. And then boom, went from there. This, I hadn't seen this in a long time. This is actually my diploma from Wake Forest. Some people don't believe that I actually graduated from Wake Forest because you had to be really smart. But yeah, I got a track scholarship there and you know, not bad from a lower class or lower middle class boy from Southern New York to stuff like this, so pretty proud of this one. Here's an interesting story. I've missed three quarters of my high school prom because I was up racing the state qualifier to get to the state meet, and uh, I ended up winning that and only getting to go to my prom for about an hour, maybe. So <laughs> probably would have rather been to the prom and had fun with friends, but a big win like this was kind of nice. We really didn't get a lot of participation medals or trophies when I was a kid. But if I did get a participation medal or trophy, I threw it out because I wanted to do better. Always wanted to do better. 2004, uh, it was a strange, strange time. Uh, I had retired about three years before from professional racing and endurance racing. And I went to go up the stairs to read my kids a book to go to bed. And I felt like my knee had exploded. Next thing I know, the pain got so excruciating, I wasn't sure I was gonna be able to stand up. And went downstairs, and the next thing I know, I, I saw the walls closing in, I saw the black for the first time. I've never passed out before. I had my cell phone on me, and I clicked 911, and I was out. Seizures, convulsions, my ex-wife came home, I was on the floor, she could barely get the door open, and I, she said I was murmuring that I had a heart attack. I get rushed to the hospital, they look at me, they say, Dad, don't worry, you've got, you know, probably have a torn meniscus that's flipped back into the joint. They're really, really painful. We'll flip it out of the joint, we'll get you scheduled for, for surgery. I said, all right, that'd be great. So the orthopedist puts the needle in my knee, looks down at the needle, looks back up at me a couple of times, and I can see his eyeball, I mean, his eyes are just wide open. And he says, have you been sick? And I said, yeah, I had pneumonia, and I you know, haven't been feeling great lately. He goes, we got to get you right up to the OR. We're going to operate on you immediately. You've got you got a serious, serious infection. You're septic. They told my family to call my parents to come down to say goodbye because I wasn't going to make it. 
And if I did make it, they'd probably have to amputate my leg. Turned out I had MRSA, methicillin-resistant staph. It was bloodborne. It was coursing through my system. It had colonized in my knee, so they got me right up to the operating table about 10 minutes later, did the first of two surgeries to get everything out. And, you know, for an able-bodied guy in the peak of his career fitness-wise to be, you know, using a walker with the tennis balls on the bottom, it was strange when I went back to work. Everybody thought I was, you know, dying. And it took me more than a year to regain the majority of my strength and to start feeling good again. Take advantage of everything that you possibly can. And remember, if you have the ability to move and to be active, take advantage of it because it could be taken away from you at the snap of a finger. There's some people that are really jacked that are natural. For sure. Who's that guy, Paul Sklar? Did yeah. you comment on him? Yeah, yeah. He actually uh, did blood work like immediately after I had talked about it one time, and it checked out. And when I'm looking at him, I'm not getting any like steroidy vibes. I'm getting mm -hmm. a really fit guy who works out really hard and has probably been doing it for 30 years. Yeah. That's that's what I get when I look at that guy. That's all feasible and possible. Yeah, so has anything uh, anything changed for you in terms of allegations in your comments? You know, I really thought that that was going to be it, and I even thought after I had submitted the blood work immediately uh, that things would change. But no, things have not changed. They uh, about the same, if not worse, uh, depending on what platform you look at. Instagram, it's gotten a little better. YouTube now, it's it's pretty insane, the allegations. But what I've learned uh, you know, over time is that you can't change the way people think. They're either going to believe it or they're not. And I can't change the fact that they don't think you know what I do is realistic. I wish they would, but um, I can't change that. And I've learned to accept it. And when I see comments like that now, you know, if I don't see comments like that, I think, man, I'm doing something wrong. And when I do see comments like that, I'm like, doing something right I still got it yeah. the old man still has it so yeah comments like that just mean I mean I, I try to take them as a compliment you know even though they're they're uh, they're negative I do try to take it as a compliment but I still at the same time I don't want people to get the wrong idea I don't want people to think yeah this is a, a result of, of uh, PED steroid use TRT or anything like that so you know, as long as people are educated on it and understand it and know that there are just a lot of haters out there and there are a lot of people that supports you, then uh, everything works out in the end. I don't care if they do sports. I think sports is an extremely important part of life and it, it shaped who I am. It, it gives you discipline, it gives you camaraderie, it teaches you how to socialize with other people. Um, and it, it, it just really helps you learn about life, especially when you have, and there are individual sports and team sports but sport in general just gives you the, the framework and structure that you can apply to anything, anything in life. So if you could apply all of this energy into sport, you could apply all of this energy into your family, you could apply it into work, whatever it is, it's a basic blueprint for success in life. It doesn't mean you have to do sport. You could do it with, you know, music. You could be the best pianist you could be. You could be the best saxophone player you could be whatever it is, and then apply that framework to everything else. So I'm just happy that, you know, they did stuff like that. And all the kids, you know, just getting involved and learning. Exercise because you want to feel good. Don't just exercise because you, you feel like you have to or you, you need to. Exercise because you want to feel good. And, yeah, you know you're a successful parent if your kid can make it on their own. Then you know you at least did a decent job. My why is for my family. I mean, I talked earlier about, you know, getting your, your or getting myself straight or getting yourself straight and working on yourself that, so you can give more to other people. So my why, everything I do probably is, well, not even probably, is for my family. We're close friends around me to, to help people. Uh, so by me staying in shape, it gives other people hope saying, you know what, I'm down in the dumps. I don't feel good. I'm, you know, I lost my job, uh, you know, fighting with the wife, kids. But if I get myself right, get myself in shape, and start feeling better about myself, I might be able to attack everything a little bit better and reset, and then go out with a better attitude and a healthier attitude, rather than I'm not gonna do anything, I'm 
going to go deeper and deeper into the dumps, deeper and deeper down the mountain until I start actually digging a hole. And that's where, you know, we talk about finding balance in life. And that was a great question, you know, why do you do something? And a lot of people never really sit down and think about that. So do it for me or do it for my family and my friends.